We are back looking at your dynasty football trades. Come on, baby. Do us a favor. If you like the content, go ahead and hit a like to support the channel. Subscribe if you like dynasty football content. And go ahead and let the community know a trade that you've made in the comments below. Hey, do you want your trades to be on this weekly video series? Actually, extremely simple. All you need to do is use our code LAND when signing up to flockfantasy.com. That code will get you 30% off your membership. You choose the mother flocker tier. You're going to unlock this text channel and you'll be on our uh, show this time next week. Okay, quite a few trades to look at today. Yep. First one is from Basie Crown. He Basie says, Crown. same team as above. Sanders was uh, points on the board that I needed to drop. Ertz was a toss in. Other team was going to drop him. Maybe I hold and flip for a fourth midseason. The second is from a contender, so I'll likely it'll likely be late. The first is from a win now team as a window of the next two seasons. Okay, so he gets Zach Ertz in a first, sends away Miles Sanders in a second. Um, um okay. It's going to be a late first, apparently. Well, hopefully that changes in the next couple of years. Twenty 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 six. I mean, that's three years out. Miles Sanders probably not going to be, probably not even going to be on the Panthers. Um, I know he has signed a four-year contract, but I think there's a two-year out. It really, I think this really comes down to where that 20, 26 first is. We're probably not going to know for a while. Um, but I would I would say giving – it's this is how I see it. The, the first for Miles Sanders and the second for Zach Ertz, which I think is just too much. I wouldn't want Zach Ertz personally. I don't know how you feel yeah. about that. I would say if that's truly a late first, 110 to 112, I think the three years of Miles Sanders' production is worth yeah. more – Exactly. Then, you know, Relative. and especially sending a second and Sanders for a first, I don't really mm -hmm. love it myself because I view Ertz as a dead asset. So I'll take the Sanders side. Like, if I'm competing, that's an ideal trade to make. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Three, three, three years right. out is tough. Crime Lord, 10 team super flex. I have Lamar, so one of the stack with Andrews and still have Pat the Dragon on the bench. Also have likely in case Andrews misses time. So he gets Mark Andrews uh, in a third, sends away Hawkinson in a second. Uh, this is like the easiest yes, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, the second round pick is valuable, but uh, I, I much prefer Andrews over Hawkinson and Dynasty. I know a lot of people disagree with me on that, but uh, I think there's, there is a tier gap between them myself. For me, I feel really comfortable with both sides of this trade. I think it really just depends on who, how you view it. I think this is a win-win trade, in my opinion. One tiers, one tiers up. I guess depending on how big the tier is, I have Mark Andrews as my tight end two, obviously, and then T.J. Hawkinson as my tight end four. So I feel really comfortable with that. And that's actually the same with ADP um, yeah. on on keep trade cut uh, as I'm looking at it. So I'm okay with this trade. You get an extra second, why not take the T.J. Hawkinson side? But I think it's an even trade. Yeah, it's like in in my mind, like would you use T. Higgins and a second? To get, let's say, Garrett Wilson in a third. Like, that's the way I'm viewing it, you know? Right. And, and I would do that um, trade myself. Uh, Styles, 12-team, super flex, PPR start nine. Got my guy. Wide receivers are now Garrett Wilson, Waddle, Debo, Allen, Cooks, Reed. So he gets Waddle and a fourth. Sends away Hopkins, Diggs, oh, wow. and two second-round picks. Um what do you think? What do you think about this? This is interesting. I wonder what the value is on DeAndre Hopkins right now in Dynasty. But this feels... Wide receiver 42 is what he's currently ranked at. I mean, he is over 31 years 31 old. 31 years so. old. For some reason, I look at this trade, this feels like an overpay. Yeah. Um, I don't know it's why. Strange, it, it, it is. I think it's, what's, what's confusing is like the two seconds. Like, where are those, where are those seconds going to be? Are those two high seconds with Stephon Diggs? Are you a win now team? Um, I felt like this could have been done without without the seconds, potentially. Send DeAndre Hopkins and Stephon Diggs get Jalen Waddle back. Well, let me Waddle ask you, back. are you accepting a trade in your inbox where you send away Waddle for Hopkins and Diggs? If I'm getting the Waddle side, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you, it, Yeah, like, so I guess you have to get the deal done. The trade doesn't get done if the picks aren't there. Yeah, you have to get the deal done. So maybe the second's worse to get the deal done. So, look, I'm still going the Waddle side, but it in my eye, just looking at it, it feels like an overpay. Yeah. I, I would say it would feel more comfortable if it was one second-round pick. Mm. Uh, I mm. think that would feel a little bit more comfortable. But when you are getting those, you know, upper-tier, younger t uh, wide receivers in Dynasty – you do tend to have to overpay a little bit. Yeah. Uh, from what from our experience, 
I just think if you're looking at the next three years, I don't know that you win this trade purely from a win loss perspective on your roster. Right. Um, but I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's what Waddle costs. Yeah. Uh, all right, we have a couple of trades from Goat Rings. Ten teams start eleven full PPR. Uh, projected mid to late first. Um, so he wanted out on Josh Jacobs. He gets a projected mid to late first. Um, I'm, uh, I'm okay with this personally. Okay. Um, if it's a mid, you're winning. If it's late, you lost, and that's the kind of risk you have to take with Josh Jacobs, especially if he's going to sit out this year. Um, or miss a certain amount of games, and you said you're legit contender. So if I'm a legit contender trying to do something, maybe you, you get that 24 first, and you send that 24 first away you said to he's acquire. Not a okay, not a legit contender. contender. Then that's fine. You get that 24 first, and you try to build on, and you get Jacobs for what he's worth now, because he's probably going to drop later if he doesn't play. No one's going to want to buy Jake Jacobs potentially for for first if he doesn't play this year. I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. I believe that Jacobs plays this year, and I believe that you would get much more value for him in season. Yeah. Um. So it's my just my <clears throat> personal opinion that I if if someone if I'm a contender and someone offers me this trade and I know that it's going to be like the one ten, I know I have a good team. This is like an easy no brainer for me to take the Jacobs side myself. Yeah. Fair. Um. I don't know. I I I just don't think that you sold him at the right time. You sold him when there's a lot of controversy. We don't know what his long-term future looks like. He's not with the team. I mean, even in the next three weeks, if he reports, he'll be worth more than this, I think. So I'm not a big fan of it myself. Um, sure. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. 12-team, full PPR, start 11, two quarterbacks. I did it, sold Taylor, and don't feel happy about it. But I know it's the right move. Okay, so he sells Jonathan Taylor, gets to Narek Prince, Samaj P. run in a first. Again... I don't like this deal. Um, I like Daneric Prince. He was one of my favorite waiver wire ads. He was one of those deep players that we talked mm -hmm. about on the channel. Uh, I like Samaj P. Ryan. Samaj P. Ryan is not uh, a long-term piece that you should feel good about. He's a, oh, if an injury happens, maybe he's a flexible yeah. player, right? Mm -hmm. um, and really the asset that you're, you know, the pillar assets here is Jonathan Taylor in a first. Um yeah, again, I just don't think we're selling running backs at the right time. Running backs, if you want to sell them, that's in season. And I don't know. I just I, I don't like the deal myself. I think it just depends on what's going to happen with both of these guys. Because if I see JT right now, and J, like I think it's the same thing with Josh Jacobs. If JT holds out and you don't have a running back and you, you are just going to build, is JT value going to rise again? You know, and I think that's the same same could be said with Josh Jacobs. Like if he doesn't report, if both of these guys don't play this year, no one's gonna want either of these players for a first. You know, you you're selling in yeah. like and I think that's the risk you take, right? If they play, you, you risk it and you probably lost out on value. If they don't play, maybe you did the right move. And I think in the, in both of these trades, we're not gonna know who's gonna be the right value here at some sure. point. I would agree, Samaj so P. Ryan, I don't really care for. I don't. I don't want him in. The he dynasty interests trade. me in redraft. Yeah, in the no, dynasty no. trade, I don't want. So if that was somebody else, sure. But um, I think in value right now, I feel like that twenty four first is is significantly better than Jonathan Taylor as we Ooh. speak. But I could be wrong. Okay, we will have to agree to disagree. I guess it could That's be wrong. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right, he has a couple other ones. Uh, Twelve team full PPR. Another share of Taylor gone. I didn't get a first with this one, but Smith and Montgomery. Okay, so. He gets Rasheed Rice, uh, David Montgomery, Antonio Gibson, Devonta mm -hmm. Smith in a second. Sends away Taylor, Robinson, Ford, and two-thirds. To me, see, yeah, this is a great trade. I like yeah. this deal for you. Um, I think I might be going out on a ledge here, but I think most people would probably take Smith over JT straight up. I don't know. I, right, yeah. right now with the concerns, I, would, I, would, I could I be wrong. Yeah. Um, so, and then you look at Allen Robinson, Jerome Ford, we liked Jerome Ford, but Dev David Montgomery, Antonio Gibson, Rasheed Rice, and a second round pick. This is absolutely a huge win. In my opinion, uh, this is how I would sell Montgomery, uh, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. You know, that's, that's how I would do it myself, but yeah. you agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I like this trade. I mean, I love Smith, love Monty. Um, I like, I like this trade for you. Okay. And he has... Uh, one more here. One Woke more. up to this beauty this morning. 12 team, two quarterback, full PPR start 11. First and second projected late. 
So he gets Bryce Young, sends Zach Wilson and what he projects to be a late second and first round pick. Oh, perfect. And in, in a two quarterback league, not super flex. Yeah, two quarterback league. I mean, this is good. I wonder what this guy's doing here. Smoothie. Um, yeah. I, I like this trade for uh, seven goats. You're right. Like, what is Smoothie thinking here? Like, I'm genuinely curious. You probably like, why Zach Wilson? Video, but I don't know. Like, does he have Aaron Rodgers? Why Zach Wilson <laughs> and why late projected firsts? Um, yeah. I'm not sure I understand. Uh, okay. Space and field, I think, here. Uh, 12 team super flex, half PPR lineup, start 10. He's competing. So he uh, moves on from Traylon Burks as well as a second round pick. He gets Keenan in a first. We don't know what the first is projected to be. Yeah, I think it depends on where that, that would first be is. really good to know. If that first is, I think if that first is just mid 106, let's just say 106, 107, 108, I think I'm taking that over Traylon Burks at this very moment personally mm. um it feels like this is more of a he's competing like you're probably trading for keenan allen and a first to try and win now somehow um yeah but i, I i'm I, i'm off on Traylon in the sense of trying to like if, if you're selling Traylon right now and you can get a first for him that that's a win in my opinion yeah, I don't imagine Traylon costing this. That's why I'm con- like the, the trades that I've done with Traylon Burks right now. He doesn't cost this much. Yeah, so I'm um, I'm interested in in how he did this, or maybe this here's other the thing, person's if, a massive Traylon Burks believer. If that first ends up being, let's say, the 111, and that second is like the 203, I think you win this trade pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Um, we just don't know the context, so the yeah. context would have been really good to know there. But yeah, if that ends up being like the 105 in Keenan Allen, then yes, I think you win this side. Yeah. And I love Traylon Burks. I'm buying him everywhere. What's up, James? 12 team super flex or start 10 PPR tight end premium. The okay. 203 was going to be Mayor, so I figured Muth was good switch instead. So Pat Fryer Muth, DK Metcalf for Michael Pittman in the 203 and a tight end premium. I think you absolutely. Yep. Perfect. I think you dominated this trade. I'm, I'm again, still. Not sure what the other person was doing there. Yeah, completely agree. I love um, Pat the Dragon there over Mayer for sure. So um, I think it's a it's a it's a good trade for you. Yeah, I feel like in a tight end premium, I would pay the two hundred three for for Pat. Um, and then to me, Metcalf over Pittman is a pretty significant move as well. So yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Styles twelve team superflex PPR start nine made this trade with Kyle to make a run this year. Still have my own 25 first. I'm betting on the 24 second to be, to be late. Although it would be nice to hold Reed and Puka to see how they pan out. I'm happy with receiving Pollard here. Running backs are now Saquon, um, Pollard, Connor, Pacheco. Okay, so he gets Tony Pollard and Van Jefferson as well as a fourth round pick. He sends away a first, a second, Jaden Reed and Puka. Um, wow. I have to be honest. I think this is an overpay for Tony Pollard. And I've been buying Tony Pollard in Dynasty Leagues. Um, so, yeah, I personally don't... Like, I get the move because he's wanting to go all in. So if you win a championship, you won't think about this. I mean, look at that starting lineup. Watson, Barkley, Pollard, Wilson, Waddle, Goddard, Samuel, Keenan, Russell Wilson. Yeah, that's It's great. a very good starting lineup. And Pollard definitely improves from James Conner. I just think we gave up too much. Um, I agree. I, I completely agree, and when you look at it, and I've kind of been on the advocate, like, okay, I know Tony Paul is a great asset right now. If he doesn't get that contract extension, maybe the, the Cowboys bring in somebody else or they draft somebody next year. You know, you yeah. sold Tony Pollard here for – you got a first and a second with a wide receiver with second-round draft capital um, coming in. So I, I feel really yeah. confident in, in that trade for Kyle for sure. Yeah, and the trades that I've made for Tony, like, I haven't had to pay this much either. But, look, um, yeah, I just think it's a little bit too much. And it, it it hurts a little bit more because I really love Puka, and I really think Jaden Reed could be good. So it's not like they're – it's not like you're giving up Van Jefferson and receiving Jaden Reed, you know? Yeah, So yeah, exactly. that's, that's tough. I think exactly. I'd be on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, and Kyle actually just sent just in finished. the same trade. Yeah. Um, so on the first one, Kyle, I, I like your side personally. Again, I like Pollard. I think he's going to be fantastic this year, but I don't want to pay that much myself. If that's the cost, I might be out. Um, 
And the other trade that he has, he gets Marvin Mims. He sends away Terrace Marshall and a second round pick. I got to be honest, I think I'm with Marshall in the second here myself, even though I do like Mims and I think he is stepping into a good opportunity. Uh, I think I'd just rather re-roll the dice with that second and see what Marshall could do. Uh, I'm going with Marvin because I'm not... I don't. I think there's a lot of hoops Terrence Marshall has to jump over, and I see this team drafting another wide receiver coming into next year. Um, I guess in the long haul, I'd rather have Marvin Mims. That's what I would say. Yeah, I hear you. But so so let let me ask you this: like mm-hmm. on teams that I have Mims, I'm asking a second round pick for him right now. Mm-hmm. Um, am I asking too little then, or is that the right? I, I don't amount? think you're asking too little. I think that is the right price. Yeah, you get Terrence Marshall here. But I think as a pro, like Terrace Marshall for me, I'm not necessarily believing in. So in my eyes, it sounds sure, crazy. I mean, yeah, he's he's like a whatever yeah. happens. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's a whatever happens. Where like, I think it's I think we kind of know that pathway. I would rather stick with Marvin Mims in his pathway okay. rather than Terrace Marshall. So in my eyes, this feels like Terrace Marshall was just okay. Just get the deal done. Um, I want Marvin Mims. Sure. That's how I feel. Fair enough. I, I that that makes sense. Yeah. And I guess I think he has actually a third one here. Yeah, he does. With Styles, where he gets Alave, Walker, and a second. Sends away Diggs, Barkley, and a first. Oh boy. Oh boy. So I have Alave over Diggs. Agreed. I have Saquon over Ken. Well, yes, I do as well. And obviously, the first, first. Is more valuable than the second. This is honestly an even deal. I would say. Guess it all depends what happened with Kenneth Walker. What that what this pathway looks like with Zach Charbonnet moving on. Because if Zach Charbonnet is truly not a threat, um to Kenneth Walker, you know, top ten ceiling that I think we all believed in coming in at least top twelve ceiling before Zach Charbonnet got drafted. I think this is even because Zaquan Barkley, a year older, on the second half of his career, with Kenneth Walker only going into his second year in Chris Olave getting younger. Um, I think yeah. it all falls on Kenneth Walker here. Yeah, agreed. Very yeah. even trade. It looks like they are talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> looks like they're talking about the trades that they uh, they uh, submitted. Uh, Crime Lord, 10 team, one quarterback, home dynasty league, crowded wide receiver room with Lamb, Waddle, Olave, Ayuk, and my RB2 is Dylan. So it seemed like a solid move to me. So he gets Saquon. Sends away Mechie and Johnston. And, you know, I'm, I'm fine with this deal myself, considering the context. Uh, 10 team as well. Yeah, 10 uh, team. So I think getting an impact running back like Saquon on your on your roster is going to be worthwhile. Yeah, I think this is okay with the context. Um, and my RB2 was Dylan, so seeing like a solid move. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm okay with it. And we're going to finish off with a couple goat ring trades. Uh, you love them. Some people don't. But I respect the hustle, and I love that he gets the most out of his membership. 10-team full PPR start 11, non-tight end premium, found a Tucker supporter. Here we go. Okay. So he gets Godwin, Kittle, Harris, and A-Chain, sends away Singletary, Judy, Damian, and Tucker. So the way I'm looking at this, I want Judy over Godwin. Correct. I want Damian over Devon. Correct. The big kicker here is George Kittle. Um, is I'm this tight end premium? It's not. not. It's not tight end premium. I'm interested to know who his tight ends are. Um, at this very moment, I'm not a massive believer in George Kittle. I think he's on his last leg here. If anything, I want to sell him now sooner rather than later. Um, and now I'm not a massive Devon believer either. So I'm going to go with smooth side here. It sounds crazy, but um, I think Jerry Judy and Damian Pierce bring just significantly more value than mm-hmm. what Chris Godwin does. And, you know, I guess I would say Damian Pierce versus Devon A. Chain there, in my opinion. Okay. I'm still in on Kittle, so that's where it's tough for me. Um, like Kittle's almost like a throw-in in this deal. That's that's what's crazy. I feel like yeah. he's just, like, being thrown in deals. Um, but, yeah, you have to ask the question, is getting George Kittle worth downgrading, and I like A. Chain, to A. Chain, and two Godwin from Pierce and Judy. Mm. 
Uh, and I don't know the answer unless we see your roster. If you had a suitable tight end in a non-tight end premium, I wouldn't have done this deal. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Exactly. Uh, so unless Kittle's a huge upgrade, you know, uh, I wouldn't have done it. 12 team, two quarterback, full PPR start, 11, non-tight end premium. Second is projected top five. Okay. All the wide receivers to buy anything I want. <laughs> he told us his whole roster there. So it looks like he sends away Najee Amon Ra. Jalen Warren and a second. He gets Antonio Gibson, Jalen Waddle, Ramondre Stevenson, and a third. So goes from Najee to Ramondre. Goes from Waddle or Amonra to Waddle. Waddle. Yeah. I um, think this is a pretty good even deal here. Yeah, I think it's a good pivot here from, from seven goals. I think your biggest upgrade here, if it does pan out, would be Antonio Gibson over Warren. Yeah. Um and then obviously the th- you know, you had to probably get it done, so you swap seconds and thirds. But Waddle, good pivot. I think Ramondre Stevenson is a good pivot off of Najee. And then Antonio Gibson, a massive upgrade to, to Warren. So I like that trade. Yeah, yeah, same. All right, well, that is it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor. Go ahead and drop a like to show some love. Let us know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. That's completely fine. Mm-hmm. And if you want your trades on the show, you know how to do so. Uh, see you in the next one. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L A N D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.